So, happy Lawnmas Day, everybody. Um, this is a special Lawnmas Day because Lawn is 50 today. Can you believe it? As I've said in my last video, 50 years of... I mean, just... I just can't get my head around of it. I mean, there's people in worse situations than Lawn, isn't there? You know, you turn 15, you're in prison for fucking... Um, being a serial killer or a terrorist or whatever. But, you know to be like a registered sex offender that hasn't committed any sex offences, well, has not, you know, it, the, the uh, not to put it, lawn slant on it, which was the crime was bogus, which he said in his lawsuit. But you get where I'm coming from. He was, you know, he's a failed child predator, as far as we know. Um, so, it, it, you know, how would you sort of view, you, you know, because at 50, you would like take stock, one would imagine, and at least try and have a bit of introspection and look back and go, All right, okay, what have I actually done? Um, many people's lives are splattered with tragedy, but Lawns has been one big traumatic event, hasn't it? Usually, um, in these videos that I do, um, the Lawnography Life Lessons, we um, look at, you know, what's one of Lawn's many failings that we can that we, that we can look at and learn from. But because it's his birthday and it's his fiftieth, um, I'm going to do something sort of a little bit unusual and potentially controversial, and look and see if Lawn actually has any positive traits that we can actually learn from. <laughs> And that concludes this video. Goodbye. Um, but, yeah, I just, in all seriousness, I'm going to do something nice for this fucking guy. Um, not that he'll be listening or gives a shit, but you get what I'm saying. Um, so, has this geezer got any traits that would be deemed positive? or admirable, or, yeah, almost, I almost feel like I commit to committing a sin by uttering these words, however, you know my specific beliefs, and, and the standpoint that I look at things from, is that, um, ingrained in all of us is the potential for good and evil, some fall down the evil path for various reasons, and some, but even people that I would consider to be very good people um we've all done bad shit do you get what i'm saying all bad people have done good stuff well i don't know i mean let's look at lawn because that's what this is about i through all the material that we have of him whether it be the the what you know it's mainly comprised of the catfishing isn't it most of it i've never even heard um so i can't make a judgment on everything, I'm sure there are people listening to this video that have heard shitloads more stuff than I have. So please feel free to comment on anything that um, I am not aware of. However, I have heard, I think I've heard probably 80% of the Ramona stuff at some point. Some of the Tiffany, most, I don't know, probably most of the Tiffany stuff, if not half. And the other stuff I've never listened to, um, really. Um, and we've got the chat log. We've got the phone calls. We have the footage. We have um, his lawsuits. Um, you know, we have various character statements from people like Betty. Um, you know, I we've got his court appearances. I've been to see him, you know, at, at court, and out of all that, I can't think of one selfless act, one selfless, everything that he has said or done, which might appear to be a selfless act, has all been motivated by something that he wants to gain. Now, if you look upon yourself, it's probably not, and that this isn't to insult anybody, because I put myself in that category, is that most things that we do are all nothing. It's very rare that we commit truly selfless acts. It does happen, 
Um, but, you know, there's nothing inherently wrong with that because we have to look after ourselves. And primarily, we, you know, we have to. We're in a survival game. of. It's a little bit different for humans because most, well, maybe not most, but a lot of humans in the Western world, the survival is immediately guaranteed. You know, we don't have to scramble around and be hunter-gatherers for food. Um, you know, it's like at me at the moment, I'm sat in my abode in comfortable surroundings with plenty of food i'm healthy i've got money i've got an automobile i've got you know family and friends if i need them um i've got an half decent job so i'm in a position where selfless acts should be what i'm doing um from a personal perspective i mean i don't know whether you count close for friends and family because um that's just a natural thing you, you know it's like i you know you commit selfless acts with regard to your children people that you know it's like that's a natural thing i was having some really i can't really go into detail because there's people that i know might listen to this shit but me and some of my friends have been having quite detailed conversations lately because someone we know is behaving in a way that we find fucking just fucking unbelievably bad and uh, we were talking about like how not to him but to some of the others we were talking about like how you go about your life and how you um, com- you know how, how do you treat the people closest to you um, mm-hmm. um, and I said that because one of my friends went through a load of trouble with um, with his daughter when he split up from his ex, and there's no point going into detail, but, you know, he had a torrid time, and he, he spent thousands to trying to see her on a regular basis. You know, um, he went through hell just because he wanted to see his daughter, and he wanted to look after her. And it wasn't a conscious decision that he made He didn't have to sit down with a piece of paper and write out the pros and cons of doing it. He did it because it was a natural thing. You've got a dependent there, someone you brought into the world. It's natural that you want to look after them. Some people are not like that. Some people are that way that any selfless act, even towards their own children, is totally alien to them. Thank the Lord that law never had kids. You know, he points to it in the footage, unfortunately, you know, thank the because they would have ended up in care. Well, I mean, the mother would have looked after him, but if he'd have been solely responsible for looking after them, them kids would have been screwed. I don't think that... Oh, it's interesting. You know what? It's kind of... We could probably do a video and theorise about what would have happened because it's interesting because I don't think he'd, like, fuck them off. I don't think he'd, like, disown them and leave them in a little fucking you know, leave them in a little play den to fend for themselves and come to horrific circumstances. I think he would use them as a kind of tool to make himself look better and pull women and add to his sense of self. And there's a lot of parents like that. And there's one of one of my failings at the minute is something that I've really got to look at is a lack of patience and tolerance for other people that I find irritating. So most, a lot of people where I live have egotistical behavioural traits. So, for instance, and, and it's my ego that's reacting to their ego, so it's something I've got to be aware of, but I've got such a fucking low tolerance level for these people. And one of the things that pisses me fucking off more than anything is over-the-top egotistical parenting. And what I'm talking about is, like, when you go in... When I go and sit down in the coffee house and read the paper, which I do quite often it's one of my little things that I like doing after a day at work you know I'll buy the paper I'll sit there and read it with a cappuccino fucking beautiful you know um and you get these parents that come in with the kid and that load and over the top and they want you to hear their parenting and I heard this guy the other day, and he was going, you spoiled you, aren't you? You can't have that. It's always, always like this, him. It's like, oh, for fuck's sake, dude. No one gives a shit. He's like, he's showboating his kid. You could look at it 
I'm looking at it as a negative ego thing, and it is like he's not doing a great job of being a parent because what you've got to realise is he's, although there's a lot worse, do you know what I mean? It's it's like he's caring for him, but he's spending his energy making sure that other people can see that he's a great parent rather than actually paying the child full attention. And, you know, occasionally, usually it's older people who like, who, you know, you're a little bit starved for attention or that, you know, They'll join in and go, oh, and tick you, and then it'll strike up a conversation, and then that fills their time because they've got fuck all else to do, and then the dad loves it because he's fucking, people are buying into his, look what I've got, look at my cute kid, oh, you're paying attention to me. You can see the games, the ego games that people play, but I can't complain about that. It's got nothing to do with me, like, but I struggle with the patience. I, I can't, it, fucking winds me up, I'm sat there, it's like, I don't want to wear this, dude, it's like, great, you've got a kid, you know, I've been there, I know what it's like, um, it's fucking, but I, 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 oh, you know, it just winds me up, I think he'd be one of them people that would not use it as a tool, he, it would, it would be a defining characteristic for him, and that's when you can usually spot shitty parenting, is that, because I deal with that a lot in various professional um, endeavours that I engage in and deal with the, usually the negative end or what, sometimes positive, but um, shoddy parenting is when, it's when it adds to your sense of self, so you have a mind-made self, which is the ego of, I'm such and such, like, I'm a nurse or whatever, I'm a doctor, and I'm a, you know, and there's nothing, those are things that we are, but we make them identical, you know, we we kind of add it to our sense of self. And the ones that are usually the shit parents are the ones that totally identify with being parents. Like, so for instance, they've probably not got much going on in their life, and they use being a parent to give them some meaning. There's nothing inherently wrong with that, but it should add to your life, not define it. And them are the ones that are like, um, you know, over the top parenting. I've got a close friend and I love him to fucking bits. And he's come round with his daughter a few times. He's got a son now. Uh, and he's, he's such a great guy. He's never been the most confident guy when he was growing up, when we were all kids. You know. Um, he does over the top parenting. Like... He, he, he's like, he, his daughter is like, oh, precious girl, precious, um, like, uh, oh, beautiful and all that. I'm like, dude. And it's like, well, what it is, right? I know I didn't get much attention when I was a kid, so I'm making sure she gets it. But what he doesn't realise is he's going over the top. Um, You know what I mean? And it's like, them are the, them are the kind of people that, that, um, that usually... That you know they're not. I mean, there's worse. You know they love them, but it's all it's ego based with a lot of people. Rather than just living in that moment and doing what that child requires, attention, making sure that they're living in the present moment and the the minds develop healthily. And it's not generally people's fault because you know that's the way that they've been brought up, and it, it usually takes a, a you know an, a unique special kind of person to break out of that those condition patterns that were that that we are that we inherit you know and i think lawn would be i'm going off on one here trying to think of positives about lawn and turning him into a parent but he wouldn't obviously he wouldn't be a good parent you've obviously got i'm not even touched upon the fact that he's a fucking sex offender so he wouldn't be allowed to but let's just say that he, um, you know, it was before he got involved in the Kaylee situation, which might have not have led him down that path. I mean, this is all silly, high, you know, hypothesising. But you, you get where I'm coming from, don't you? So, um, it's interesting. It is interesting because I know that, you know, he talks about it in the chat log, doesn't he, about giving the kids names. So it's something that he wants. Um... And, like I said, there's some fucking, 
there's some great parents out there. It takes an enormous amount of patience, tolerance. You basically, as this is the way I look at it, when you become a parent, your life is no longer your own primarily. You are not the main concern of your life. Your kid is, and if if if, in, if it's to a degree, you've got to look after yourself because if you're not healthy, you can't look after your kid. You need to be healthy. So there's that looking after yourself is. It's still not paramount, you know, but, well, I suppose it is really. You get what I'm saying, though, don't you? But, in my opinion, if you, if your social life and your financial endeavours and all that are primary and your kids are not, then you, you're not, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be a fucking parent, you know. Um, you bring in another life into this world. And there's millions, you know, why do you think there's so many people fucked on the planet? Why do you think there's so many people who haven't got a fucking clue what they're doing? Why do you think there's so many obese people? Why do you think there's so many fucking sex offenders and that? Because they're just brought up and not nurtured correctly. It's a little bit like having a fucking killer whale at SeaWorld stuck in a tank. Human beings, each of us, have so much potential, so much... There's with so much power that we're not aware of. It's it's frightening, really. Um, so I've gone off on one there about Lon's potential parenting, but if I'm trying to think of a positive trait that the guy's got, even Tiffany mentioned it before I did. So I'm going to kind of lay the blame on her for this. So if anybody has a pop, they can have a go at her first. I mean. Um, is that Lon's quite resourceful. He um, does do a lot of different things. If you think, you know, he's tried uh, many different jobs, he tries different endeavours, he doesn't put enough work into the endeavours, he doesn't commit himself, he's not disciplined enough, so it never works out. There's so many reasons why it never works out. You know, he's criminally insane to a certain degree. I mean, not as much, you know, there's a lot worse people that literally commit, that get arrested by the cops every single day. You know, that's just their life. But he is someone that can't really abide by the rules. You know, he's, he's got probate. He ended up back in court because he's violated his probation. Um, Shin said he's criminally insane. I'm not sure. Really. Because his, 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 his violations that led him into court last year were kind of... You could say technicalities with regard to the to the alcohol. For instance, in England, alcohol wouldn't be an issue with regard to his probation conditions. We're really soft with people. There's sex offenders that do did what Lorne did that don't even get prison sentences. You know, I suppose some of the show didn't either, did they? I suppose it varies from state to state. But he is a resourceful person, you know, it's like he'll do, he'll dabble in this, he'll dabble in that. He has got, he can, you know, his communication skills are quite, well, they're not good. He can, you know, he can hold a conversation um, and he has manipulative power, not power, but well, I mean, if you can call it manipulative power to fucking manipulate an imaginary 13 year old girl. Uh even as I like him saying that, oh, he's resourceful, the more and more I dig into it, the more you realise he kind of isn't that resourceful. He does have a certain resourcefulness. It's like I know people. I don't really have them as close friends, but I've never really held a job down all the fucking life. Um, actually, do I still know any of them? Do I know any of those people anymore? I'm not sure. But, well, no, I know people that can't hold a job down. I used to know people that never had a job. Um... Long can't really hold a job down for that amount of time, but he tried, you know, he had his business, he did construction, he did a bit of phone work, he does driving, he tries stupid, pathetic internet endeavours, he wrote a book, he did his lawsuit, um, he does a bit of, um, he, play, he learned to play the guitar, not very well, but he did it, you know, he can strum a few chords in bad rhythm, he tr singing, I'm not even going to mention that. Um, like I said, he does his poetry, uh, he learned poorly about the legal process with regard to all these zany lawsuits which gave us hours and hours of fantastic entertainment oh man female powers unintentional travel just fucking gold um 
uh, yeah, so he, he, he does... He is quite a resourceful guy. He's not just someone who sits in a corner doing fuck all. He's got a bit of get up and go about him, which is admirable to anybody. I fucking despise laziness. I fucking hate it. I hate people who can't be asked doing anything. And they're usually the gobbiest ones. They're usually the ones that are on Facebook babbling on about political fucking nonsense. I mean, I'm not the fucking biggest go-getter in the world. But, you know, I work hard on myself. Um, there's a lot of, you know... But, but I don't like bone idleness. I don't like people that have no interest. Like, we have people at, at our place at work, right? And and, and the organisation I work for can be a fucking soft touch sometimes. Um... And and some people, when they get that job, they think they've made it, and they're not interested in doing any hard work. They're not interested in doing what it takes to become respected. They're just lazy. They're no interest in grafting. Um, and it's usually embedded into you when you're young. It's like, how did your parents make? You know, here we go back to shoddy parenting. Did you? Did your parents give you some kind of respect for money, for earning money? Did they give you pocket money for washing the dishes or doing the garden? Did you learn to work hard when you was younger? Did your parents treat you good with, um, you, you know, did they not go overboard in buying your stuff? But some people, because this is the thing now, right? And I, I see it all the time. Especially because I bought this VR headset, which is great. I have probably half an hour on it every day, sometimes an hour. Or the other night, I had about an hour and a half on it because it was like Friday night, and I didn't have anywhere specific any exciting plans. So I thought oh, it's Friday night. I'll have a VR night. You know, it was good. But the problem was when I went to bed, I could see the fucking games in my mind. I was like, this is not healthy. So I fucked it off for a couple of days then. Um, but these people that have them, I'm part of this Facebook group. They that's become their life. Like they, there's like a a, um, a meeting, virtual meeting room where people can chat, and people are in there, and they're posting on this group, and it's really interesting to see what people did. Um, you know, their their lives have become virtual lives. Um, where you know, instead of playing real tennis, they'll play virtual tennis because it's not as hard, but they think they're actually doing something. I mean, ironically, there's worse things you can do because you're still getting a little bit of exercise, but what most... It, it, it never ceases to amaze me how fucking downright thick people can be, um, especially older people with families because they're on these game, this this headset thing, which is the most immersive gaming experience you could ever have, and they're spending hours on it, and um, they're taking it dead seriously. They don't realise that they're being sucked into a virtual world. It's called virtual fucking reality. The cube is in, you know, the, the clue is in the fucking title of the product. It's supposed to be something for a little bit of fun and a bit of escapism after a busy day at work where you can zone out and you can relax. It's basically, I mean, ironic. I don't, I struggled. I thought about getting rid of it completely. I thought about completely fucking it off because I thought, is it, is it, is it, I thought it might be totally unhealthy, completely, because that time I'm using that to zone out, I should probably be meditating. That would be um, a more adequate use of my time or reading um, or running. But I thought, well, actually, no, I do all that. I've got, it's about, life is about balance, you know, I've got to have a little bit of fun and a little bit of escapism, so I think in, in minor moderation, it's okay, if I'm just defying it to myself, I don't know, I'm still trying to work it out, um, but yeah, people escape into a virtual world, it's, it's, it's very, very interesting, and it's also disturbing, and I'm sorry for being judgmental here, but I did see a girl in the on this Facebook group, this Oculus Quest UK Facebook group, and she said, "Oh, I love the VR rec room. I believe it's called this virtual chat room. I never go in there because if I want to meet people, I meet fucking real people in a real environment. I mean, I suppose it could be good for during lockdown. But some girl put a post on this group, and it said, um, 
um, I can't remember exactly it was worded. It was something along the lines of, I love the rec room. I'm in there every night. Who else is? And then loads of people commented and went, yeah, I'm in there every night. It's great, isn't it? And just out of curiosity, I looked at a, a, a profile, a Facebook profile, and every, all I could see, because it was like um, uh, privacy settings or whatever, I could see her profile pictures, and every one of her photographs was filtered. So, I, which I could suggest means she's insecure about her looks. I believe she's probably in her early 20s, late teens maybe, this girl, don't know. Um, I was like, that's not, that's really, that's dangerously unhealthy for mental health. That girl, because you can create your avatar, just like a filtered photograph on Facebook, um... You know, you can go in there, create an avatar, and then meet people and not be secure, not be insecure about your looks or whatever. She, you know, she might have a weight issue. I don't know. But what what good is that doing? It could one could argue it could lead to some kind of further confidence, but it's so dangerous, so so dangerous. You could slip into that world and just become totally ingrained in it, where real life is a chore. You know what I mean? It, it It's fucking, like, I'm glad they weren't around when I was in my late teens. I had moments when I was younger where I had moments of massive insecurity and self-doubt, as I suppose a lot of people do. Luckily, I've always, always, up until recently, really, but I suppose it's because of age... And because I don't drink anymore, I've always had a really healthy social life. I always had a lot of friends, even when I was younger and I was like, um, you know, I had a lot of self doubt and confidence issues. I always had groups of friends around me and things to do, and I always had a reasonable, reasonable amount of attention off girls, like a reasonable amount. Not, I was never the guy in the group who was always copping off with the most women, but I did all right. You know what I mean? So if you're per- a person that is um, in this, you, you know, let's say you're insecure about your looks or whatever, really massively, and there's a lot of people like that, especially with, you know, Insta chat culture, whatever the fuck it is. Um, that VR represents a danger, a massive, massive danger. It's not that the people that develop these VR things are inherently evil. Of course they're not. They, it's a, like I've said, I'm sorry to go on about this, but I don't suppose you'll be, if you're still listening, you're interested in what I've got to say. I just worry about coming off as being preachy sometimes. It's, it's supposed to be a long video, but bear with me. Um, yeah, so, yeah, the developers, they're putting together entertainment. And it, I, I remember when I first, switched it on and I was amazed I was like this is fucking brilliant and it was it was actually healthy for me at that time because I was going through a lot like I've got you know I don't want to go into detail too much because there's always not not so much anymore but there's always a person if I divulge too much personal information some twat a week later will will use it against me because I've still got a few enemies floating around not many but maybe one or two here and there, and they always try and use personal information against me, like, someone put once, um, okay, well, never mind, anyway, so, uh, but I've had some really challenging situations in my life lately, um, you know, pretty bad, I'm not fucking, um, you know, so, it, it come along at a nice time, and it was fun, and we're all struggling with the, you know, everybody's got, uncertainty at the minute with the um, pandemic so we've all got a little bit of anxiety and a bit of uncertainty and we're worried about people we're worried about ourselves it's a difficult time so from that aspect that th- this kind of recreation and technology can be very helpful but it's it's like I said it's just like everything else in life it has to be and I'm not overdoing it I know this is the truth everything food um even exercising can become destructive you know gym buffs or whatever you want to call them whose entire life is built around becoming big and then they'll take steroids you'll never be big enough 
you know what I mean? It's like, but yet, building muscle and exercising is so, so important. But if used incorrectly, it can become incredibly destructive. Um, You know, food, you know, that can. I don't agree. Alcohol's a different matter, but I've spoke about that enough, you know. So, um, Lorne slipped away into virtual world, didn't he? Even in the chat log. That was what that chat log represented for him. It was an illusory situation. He didn't know it was illusory. But let's just say Kayla was real, right? Let's just say, I mean, we love theorizing about this, don't we? Let's say that Kayla was real. And he was having that chat with Kayla. And Kayla was this real girl and there was no sting operation. And it was a real situation. It would still be an illusion, if you think about it. Because that relationship would never have hap uh, gone anywhere. The The fantasies that Lorne was projecting weren't real. They were fantasies. Well, obviously, a fantasy isn't real. But fantasies can become true. You know, what, was Dr. Moore going to deliver the baby and, the, and Lorne was going to kick him out? What? What? You know what I mean? It's like the, this fantasy that he had that they were going to run away together and that he was going to get his, you know, he was going to, you know, s fucking have sex with her and everything was going to be great and he was going to get away with it. I mean, it was all bullshit. And that chat log was his virtual reality. It was him, that, mixed with beer was his escapism. And that's what he's done all his life with beer. But at that point, you think about his life in that situation, right? He'd run away from scamming people. Didn't know anybody. He had his neighbours who were pissing him off. He was going from job to job. I mean, when I'm talking about does Lorne have any traits, admirable traits, and like I said, it's always dodgy when I say this. Him running... I mean, he ran away, so it can't be re looked upon favourably. But still, to go somewhere else and start anew and try and build new, you know, get a job and do something different does take a certain amount of courage. I don't know what alternative. I suppose, really, because he's running away, he didn't really have a choice because if he'd have stayed where he were. So I, I'm trying to come up with these positives and I'm just failing <laughs> because it's not... You know, because being isolated like that in any situation can be challenging. It's like I went, um, it was weird, I went to Corfu, the Greek island, a couple of weeks ago, just for five nights, because of everything I've been, you know, challenges I've had recently, I just thought, fuck it. Um, and a mate of mine, like, I bumped into him, he's like, oh, have you, you're a bit tanned, where have you been? I said, oh, I've just been in Greece for a few days. He's like, all right, who'd you go there with? I just said, no, I'm on my own. And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, I went on my fucking own, and he couldn't get his head round it, and I was like, yeah, I mean, he's fucking hell, it's only three hours away on a plane, it's like, yeah, but what would you do, like, he said, well, fucking, what would you, well, same thing anybody else would do, have a few, you know, some nice food, do a bit of exploring, maybe have a beer, Um, but it was so... He said, oh, bloody hell, you brave you. I could never have done that. I was like, I, it just kind of struck me at that point. I was like, it's not bravery. It's just I'm just different to him. But I also would say that if something like that, just going away for a few days on your own, terrifies you, you've got some problems there that you need to look at. Not problems, problems, but certain... There's fear, and you need to identify why you've got that fear, and you need to work upon it, because you're not, if you can't do that, there's certain things that you need to build upon, in my opinion. Um, It's like, well, what's there to be scared of? So, you know, if you was faced with that situation where you could only, you know, there was nobody to go away with at that point, would you stay at home and fucking do the same mundane, boring shite, or would you take a bit of a chance and just go on a little adventure? You know, I rented a bike out, went all over this island on my scooter. It's not exactly fucking climbing the Andes on my own, is it? But it was a nice little adventure. Um, but the prospect of that for some people is terrifying, and that's a failing that needs to be looked at um, carefully. 
But like as I'm relating it to Lorne and him being on his own, it was kind of a it was kind of a necessity to run away from the crimes he's committed. But he has moved about quite a bit. He took the plunge in the Air Force when he was younger. I mean, you naturally have more courage at that point. You you you've less fear. Um, because there's less baggage in your mind and you're just acting mainly upon instincts and intuitive intuitiveness. Um so he does have that element of him, I suppose. It might be something to do with where he's grown up, very isolated in Maine. I've, what a beautiful fucking state that is. I'd fucking love... I mean, Christ knows what the world's going to be like when I retire, but I'm just going to do home, you know, hire a fucking camper van and go across America. That'd be great. Um, you know, hey, Flanders, look what I've got. It'd be like that fucking... Uh, <laughs> oh, she's a beaut. <laughs> That one where Homer gets that fucking camper van. <laughs> um, yeah, so, can I think of anything else positive about Law? I was going to say he has a sense of humour and he laughs at himself, but I don't take that as a kind of positive thing because it's more, for me, a lack of integrity. Don't take yourself too seriously. Poke fun at yourself. That's great. But for him... I see it as a like a lack of integrity. You know, like when they get him to sing I Love the First. And you know what? I don't like his subsequent renditions of I Love the First. The best and only I Love the First from him I want to hear is the one where he was on the phone to Kayla because there's such comedy attached to it. It's like when Candid Fella does the brand calls, which are fucking great. But when he does the recordings of him where he's singing it because he's been asked to, I don't like it. It sucks. Because... It just makes me feel a bit shit. I'm like, dude, do you know what I mean? It's like, do you not real? Why are you singing that song? That song that you used to groom a child. You think that it's acceptable to do it for a laugh, and for it's not even a laugh. So <laughs> I'm trying to say he's got a sense of humor. <laughs> he doesn't take himself seriously, too seriously. But I don't, I don't like it. Um, he does have a sense of humor, to a degree. Hmm. But he's not. Hmm. Hmm. I don't like it. It's not a very intelligent sense of humour, or anything, or charming. He's just a fucking loon. <laughs> uh. What else? Hmm. So we've got his resourcefulness. There is one thing. Right. How he just keeps going. No matter what happens to him. No matter how many times he gets catfished. No matter how many times he ends up in jail or he's registered as a sex offender. He always has that or, uh, that part of him that will stand up for himself. Um, and, and not let himself be put down. Like I remember, I think he was on the phone to Ramona once and Ramona was like rather quite going after him i can't remember what for and he it was i think he, she was digging at the sex offender stuff and he said don't do that don't make me feel like shit because i'm not gonna let you and i was like you know what fair play to the guy because it's like no one should do that everybody should stand up for themselves and not let somebody else make them feel like shit and that's a trait we should all have because people out there We'll fucking, we'll do that. There will always be someone, somewhere, plentiful amount of people that will fucking destroy your soul to make a quick buck or to make themselves feel a bit better. Always be people like that or energy vampires. And you've got to be fucking careful of those people and deal with them appropriately. Um, usually just by just not allowing those type of people into your life, you know. Um, and there's people that do it not maliciously. It's just because they have... You know, we we knew somebody at, <laughs> at work, right, and it was an ongoing joke. Every time you'd ask her how she was, she'd go, <sighs> well, not that good, really. So I just fucking forgot, you know, didn't ask. <sighs> it's like, oh, how are you feeling today? It's such a body. She's like, <sighs> it's like, for fuck's sake. And she was, a, she was a really nice person, but she was such like a fucking downbeat kind of character when it came to work that everything was negative. You know, so you've got to, like... 
you know, even though she's a nice person, that rubs off on you when she's being negative about things. So you just basically got to cut people like that out of your life or not give them an opportunity where they can do that. You know what I mean? Right, what else have we got? He has, he'll work hard, Lorne, won't he? He'll get, he'll, he's a grafter. I don't think I've mentioned that when I said he's resourceful. Resourcefulness and hard work is like a little bit different. Resourceful is you're willing to engage in many different endeavours or do other things, learn new skills in order to get by and become a better person or more more a more rounded person. He will graft. Um, you know, he's had lots of different jobs. He'll do a day's work. Um, he's, I, I don't know much about his septic business, um, but I think he, he had to put a bit of work in to get to where it was. Um, he's very hard working at trying to groom kids. I mean, a month long of um, talking to Kayla, you know, in this virtual world of his. Um, just going back to that as well, drawing the comparisons, I think it's only app considering how much I prattled on about this fucking VR headset I bought. I'm sorry if I keep going on about it. Um, but it's interesting to draw the parallel with Lawn's slip into virtual world with Kayla. When I was saying that it was an illusion, even if it was real, it was, a, you know, it, it 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 was a it was a, a very convenient, idealistic world that he could slip into. Just to, uh, just think about what that chat log represented for him. It's really interesting. Like it. It, he's a failure with women, but at, during that chat log, he was no longer a failure with women. Even though she wasn't a woman, ironically. Or even real. <laughs> um, so, he didn't have to deal with that. He didn't have to deal with the fact that he was lonely. Um, he didn't have a fear of the future. I think he projected that relationship into... I mean, it's, it's fucking nuts, but... It just represented an idealistic escape from his life. He was also indulging in these fantasies, this sexual fantasy that has obviously been bumbling under, bubbling underneath the surface for so long and coming out with the shit he did. It was a conversation with his darker self. You know what I mean? It was too wet. It wasn't, you know, there was nothing coming back. Are you anxious to see my penis? Yeah. Are you anxious to see my butthole? Yes. Are you anxious to... You know, all this nonsense. Continual. You know, I can't wait until we get to that part of the chat log. It's just an interesting... It's interesting how he slipped into that and... You know, he was so happy. I think... I mean, it's not really happiness. It depends what you want to define as happiness. True sort of happiness is joy. Joy is inherent to our true being, and it's about tapping into that. Happiness is a very... um, What's the word? Fleeting thing, because you can be happy one day. If you have a uh, beautiful fucking car that you've bought, that you spent fucking years... Um, saving for, and then you buy it, and then it gets fucking smashed into a million pieces by some deranged twat with an axe. You're not going to be happy then, are you? If that was making you happy. So happiness and unhappiness is a very fleeting, flimsy human thing. It's joy that is inherent to who we are. Um, and that can go through waves, depending on, you know, where you are in life and how well you look after yourself, how disciplined you are. Uh, how in touch you are with your own feelings, how real you are, how integral you are. Lon doesn't have any of that. Nothing. Doesn't have, you know, his happiness now, I mean, I don't know what it is now because I've no idea what he's up to, but if I go back to, I don't know, 18 months ago or whatever, it was all about drinking and this fake catfish and that kept him going. It wasn't happiness though. You know, um, that's why relationships can be so dangerous. Any relationships, you know, romantic relationships. It's like people say, oh, I'm happy now. I've met such and such a body. Well, what happens if such and such a body fucking leaves you? That You know, that's not, there's nothing wrong with relationships. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful part of life. But 
are you relying on that to be your source of happiness? Because if you are, you're fucked. It doesn't matter if it's the perfect person because you'll put too much pressure on the relationship and it will ultimately fall apart. And most people do that. That's why dating's so tricky. I mean, he's, I still dabble, you know, I go on dates quite a lot, but fuck me, man, the shit that you see on these dating apps, it, the amount of fucking, oh, Pete, I think it's like getting crazier. The, it just mystifies me, like, intelligent people, like, even doctors, like, women doctors are putting, every single picture of theirs is either filtered or they've got huge sunglasses on, it's like, fuck me, you might as well, I might as well meet you in that fucking virtual reality world. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, running out of time here. What other traits has Lauren got? So he is hard working, I'll give him that, right? He's not a lazy fucker. He'll do shit, even though he wants Kayla to wake him up. Hmm. I think that's it, you know. I can't really. I can't think of anything else. Resourceful. Yes. Hard working, yes. His communication. Hmm. Hmm. He's quite. No, manipulation's not a strength, is he? And he's not that good anyway. He can only fucking manipulate a fucking catfish. Um. I'm really struggling. Well, happy birthday, Lawn. Sorry, dude. I did try my best to try and find more fucking traits dude but hmm. come on right I've got to think of one more one more positive aspect of the makeup of Lorne's persona hmm. I was going to say he's funny as fuck but it's it's not you know, he's not a comedian is he we're laughing at him we're not laughing with him so we can't use that uh, <laughs> uh no, sorry. It's fucking... Can't think of anything. Right. Any, right, guys. I'm going to have to wrap it up because fucking... God, I've been prattling for 47 minutes. Jesus Christ. Um, if you can think of any positive traits of Lorne and Lorne's birthday, please send put them in the comments, dudes and girls. Um, yeah, because I can't think of any more. Right, I'm going to give myself 10 more seconds. Right. Um, to, um, is there anything on that picture that's oh he sleeps on the floor oh, fuck, look at all them bags in that room <laughs> boxes full of shit um, you know, it's gone I can't think of anything I can't think of anything else at all because he doesn't look after his family that good you know he says he loves his mum but he fucking and I'm sure there is a part of him that does but he doesn't, he doesn't do anything for her does he he just gets her to do his fucking dirty work for him like prattling on in court. No. Well, that's the end of that chapter. Uh, right, okay, guys. So, um, I hope... Uh, there's lots of people doing some good stuff at the minute, isn't there? Uh, with regard to the long content, you know, there's some great videos coming out from Raptor Bacon and Lawn Identity. Um, I think Clubber's going to appear on there later. Um, I know Batsby's been doing, like, a stream every day you know, of, of doing the chat log, um, you know, that takes some doing, it just shows you, doesn't it, how interesting it, um, how interesting it all is, um, yeah, anyway, guys, uh, I hope that you have enjoyed me, um, sounding off, um, I don't think you do, otherwise you wouldn't listen, so, uh, I will, um, be touching base with you all at some point soon one would imagine um so i hope you're all doing well i hope you have a glorious holy day on lawn's 50th uh and i'll speak to you soon